So we're heading towards Tulsa, Oklahoma to go check out a pretty cool old truck. A few weeks back, a guy named Kurt hit me up on the old face space and he was interested in the hood and cowl off of that Seafoam 67 that we picked up on Thanksgiving morning. After BSing with him for a few minutes on the phone, we pretty much became friends. Now the other day, he sent me a picture of his newest find, which is an all original 1967 Chevrolet C10. Now after seeing that, that gave me a pretty good idea. So now, I'm southbound and down, loaded up and trucking. I don't know if it's considered trucking, but I got two C10 hoods and a cow that I'm delivering to him. So two more hours and we'll be there. Hey guys, it's the Chad. And I know a lot of you guys already have a 1967 Chevy or GMC truck, or you're looking to buy one. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that GM made a lot of changes every two years to the parts of these old trucks, and they made some type of change every year. But do you know what they are? Because it's pretty important if you're building a year-specific truck. So today I'm starting a new series on how to identify the differences of each of these years of trucks, and I wanna go through and highlight a different truck and recognize another owner along the way. So sit back, relax, and let's check out this 1967 C10. So I finally made it down to Oklahoma and I'm here with Kurt and thank you for letting us come down and, and check out your truck and I appreciate you buying some of the parts off me. I know my wife's gonna be extremely happy that they're gone now, so. Yeah, we won't tell mine. <laughs> well, tell us about your truck, what you got here? Well, I haven't had this truck long. I've had a handful of C10s through the years. Uh, 67 is my favorite year, as the year I was born. Uh, this particular truck come from Stigler, Oklahoma. Uh, it was a local Oklahoma truck. Uh, the gentleman I bought it from uh, purchased it from a friend uh, that the family bought it new in 67 in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Uh, just an original paint, real honest uh, truck that I've been looking for for some time. Uh, just has not been really uh, passed around from guy to guy all of its life. And, uh, I like original paint. So this isn't your only uh, 67 to 72 uh, C10, is it? No, sir. No. Well, what, do you, what else you got? Currently, I'm building a 71 uh, Cheyenne. It's, uh, it's been a cut down. It was a long bed, but it's been converted to a short bed. Right now, it's on the rotisserie uh, doing some floor work. But uh, the goal is I'm going to have it done for Pigeon Forge in uh, end of March to take it to Tennessee. Uh, it'll, I will sell it. Yeah. Cool. Well, well, what is it about the 67 to 72 that draws you in? Oh gosh, first truck. I mean, dro drove a truck identical, the same color in high school. You know, we all have stories. Uh, I'm honestly a Camaro guy, first gen Camaro guy, but something about the truck. I mean, I would rather be in my old truck any day. <laughs> yeah. I, d I definitely understand that. Yeah. We're going to do a quick walk around and see what sets this 67 apart from the others. So the 1967 was the first year of the Action Line series that GM produced. The 67 was pretty much a one-off truck because it had so many just year specific parts. A lot of the parts were carried over from the 66 C10s and that's why I think they're so desirable because they're so unique. Once you do the research, you'll find that the 67s, they don't use the same parts as 68 through 72. So why don't you grab your big cheap tablet, a crown, and get ready to take some notes and let's get started. Nobody knows what a big chief tablet is probably anymore. <laughs> so in 1967, this truck would have came in three different trim levels, the standard or what they called base, the custom or the custom sport truck, which is CST. This truck is a custom. A Couple of things that we'll be looking at will be 1967 and 68 specific, but I'm really looking to go with 1967 only. On the front of these trucks, 67 and 68, had this angled leading edge to the hood, and it also would have had the letters Chevrolet spelled out. So if we take a look at the grill, this was an all metal grill, and it had a red bow tie, and the park lights were down in the bottom. Now, if it was ordered as a custom model, you could have this chrome rectangular trim, or that would have been on the CST models. Now this truck too, it has the lower shiny trim, which would have been an option for the custom, or it could have been standard on the custom sport truck. The fenders on this are year specific to 1967. You can tell that because there is no side marker lamp cutout. Now 67 and 68 trucks, 
they had this recession on the front leading edge of the fender and that was to help blend in with the 67 68 grill another thing we'll find on 67 and 8 is they use the red bow tie emblems on the back edge of the fenders now when we move along to the doors 1967 had their own year specific door handles you wouldn't be able to tell the difference on the outside but the way the door handles go through the door the angle that they bolt inside makes them year specific when we look at the wing windows these are also year specific to 1967. a lot of this is a carryover from the 66 trucks you can tell that the glass in this one actually slides down into the channel and when you open the door it actually has a different handle newer trucks the 68 and up they actually have a hole in the glass that goes through in 1967 GM offered 15 different paint colors this one is actually a two-tone and on the 67 this two-tone it actually stopped at the drip edge where in 68 it actually was at the top of the door and down the front a pillar I know there's gonna be a little argument over this some people say no my 67 is not that way I have the white all the way down the pillars and at the top of the door but most all of them that I've seen look like this one as we move on to the back of the cab another year specific thing to this truck was the small window this was a 1967 only now you could order this with the panoramic view at no additional cost but this is what kind of makes these trucks stand out is that smaller window also in 1967 this would have been the first year that a metal bed floor was standard and the wood would have been an option now if we slide over to the bed again like the front fenders 67 only there was no side marker lamp on the bed either now if we slide to the back of the truck one thing that a lot of people miss out on is the reverse lights if you take a look at this reverse light there's a bullseye right here in the plastic now that was specific to 1967 to 1970 1971 and 2 would have had more like a waffle look to them so if we take a look at a 1967 tailgate and this was specific to 1967 only you would see this raised bump and it goes from the top of the tailgate all the way to the bottom and all the way around the entire tailgate again 67 only now with the tailgates if we were talking about a gmc model in 1967 and 68 it would have been stamped gmc but in those two years the gmc letters would have been smaller now if you look at the back of kurt's truck here you can see this trim going around the side of the tail light and the backup lamp it only goes around the outside that again was specific to 1967 and 8. in the latter years it would have went all the way around the entire assembly i'm not sure if you've ever paid attention to but some of the cows don't have holes for the antenna if it was a radio delete you would have one that looks like this so when we pop the hood a standard engine would have been a 250 inline six or a 283 the 283 was 1967 only you could have optioned it out with a 292 inline or you could have got the 327 one thing specific to the 67 i'm told is this alternator bracket huh who knew now one thing that tied from 67 to 68 would have been this front hood latch it had this front angled leading edge just like the hood did now the radiator supports they were also specific to 1967 and 68 because they were missing the headlight buckets because they weren't needed for this grill so when we look at the firewall in 1967 and 68 the fuse block was mounted in a different place so it comes through the firewall at a different location another thing that's going to be different is the emergency brake cable is going to come out lower down here under the steering column instead of up here in the latter years you're also going to notice that this firewall is completely smooth here where there would be a bulge for the later years as well the back of the firewall is going to be a little bit different too because in 1967 there was no big block option so in 68 and up they did have to reconfigure a little bit that way they could get the big block in here now the frame is also a little bit thicker and taller in 1967 as well 
Now the 68 and up, they had to narrow this out a little bit so they could squeeze in that 396. So if we look down here, in 1967, the frame was gonna be a little bit different as well because they didn't have the true power steering. They had the Ram style assist. Now 68 and up, there would have been a dimple cut out in the frame here and you would have had some raised mounting pads. You can see this has the raised mounting pads, but no indentation or no dimple in the frame. So in 1967, this would have been a six lug truck. And this truck would have came with the painted metal wheels. If it was a base model, they would have been painted black and the center caps would have been white. Now this one has the chrome or the polished aluminum hubcaps. So if we look at the inside of the truck, let's start with the door panels. If this was a base model, it wouldn't have had the armrest and only would have had the driver mirror. You could have an optional passenger mirror. The door handles were specific to 67. They kind of protrude out from the door panel a little bit and you would have had a specific window crank. Now this one's not period correct. It should look like this guy. If we go through, 67 and eight had the hand emergency brake. They also had the horizontal fuse block, but 67 only, this handle would have been different for the vents. Now if we move up to the cluster, the two year period, we would have had the wipers up top, headlights on the bottom and choke on the right. Now there was a lot of complaints that people were ripping the wiper knobs off trying to pull the headlights out. Now in 67, we had this texture, kind of like a quarter on the outside edge of all the knobs on the interior. The steering wheel in 67 would have been a three spoke 67 only if you take a look at the steering column they have this extra hole here in front of the flasher if you look at the ignition they had a smaller bezel and in 67 there was no accessory switch when we look at the cigarette plug in 67 it was flush with the dash if we look at the heater controls they would have been black in both 67 and 68. the ashtray this was year specific to 1967 it's actually wider, longer, and it is a full slider. Now, if we slide over and look at the glove box, 67 only, they would have been black and had this silver trim. This black is actually textured and it would match the cluster. Another difference with the 67 door is gonna be the stop arm. If you look at the back of the door here, the cutout for the arm is a little bit smaller. The arm itself is thinner and has this L shape. Versus 68 and up, it has a bigger cutout on the door. It's a wider arm and has this 90 degree for a stop. Another difference we would find would be in 1967, the rear view mirror had its own specific arm. It had three mounting points. As we look at the interior, in 1967, the interior and exterior paints were different colors. The interior would have matched the trim. Now, Kurt's truck is light blue, code 507. His interior is medium blue poly, 506. And if you look forward at the dash pad, it's gonna be dark blue, code 508. Who knew? And then if we go through and look at the seat belts, they were specific to 67. They used the airline buckle style. And also with the seat belts, 67 had a different style of male buckle as well. You can see it's more vertical here where the opening would have been bigger in the latter years. So we moved to the seats, the backrest on the 67, 68s, they actually folded. This would have been the same for the old buddy buckets. So we made a full walk around Kurt's 1967 C10, and I'm sure I missed some of the fun facts of the 38,000 differences that Chevy made that year. So if you guys know of any other differences, type it down in the old clickety-clack. That way, we know what they are. Well, I truly want to thank Kurt for his time and letting us use his truck today. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. That way, we can go out on the hunt for a 1968 and a new owner. We appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. I hope I hit record. <laughs> <laughs>